Hi, I'm Tom Kelmer, Kungarakan on my mother's side, Iwaja on my father's side, coming from the Darwin region. Uh, we're here today at the Darwin Convention Centre where we're running the Tackling Indigenous Smoking Workers workshop. And we brought together uh, our workers from across the nation, from 40 teams across the nation, who are here to learn a bit more about what's happening in smoking and uh, some of the new innovative ways to approach uh, addressing smoking from a population health point of view, but also more importantly, or as importantly, looking at vaping, which is, uh, and the use of e-cigarettes, which is now emerging as a key issue that's confronting Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people across the nation. Over half of our population, um, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander population, is under, under 25 or under 30. So it's a really big demographic and we're getting a lot more kids coming through schooling now and they're the ones that are getting, getting influenced. So what we're doing is we do what we call population health. It's how do you work with the community to inform and educate the community on, on the various strategies. There's a whole lot of different ways that people can get individual support but our, our program is about providing community level information and support. I'm a proud Gundajamara man from Western Victoria and I lead the Tackling Indigenous Smoking team, uh, Borais and Smoke Don't Mix in Melbourne. Yeah, so Borais and Smoke, uh, Smoke Don't Mix, so Borais is a local Wairarung word for babies or kids, given that this is, you know, came up in 2010, but this came in in the mid 90s, we thought this message is still relevant as, as today than it was in the mid 90s. Our role is to do a lot of uh, community marketing and community campaigning with the mob in Melbourne on the Kulin Nations. Um, our job is to pretty much just uh, plant the seed with our mob around about more uh, education and give them the, the resources about making better decisions around smoking. We do all of our promotional marketing on buses, trams and all that stuff, but for us is that is, is more of a bottom-up approach, so we get the kids to drive the message and who's the kids going to drive that message to is to their parents and to their, to their grandparents as well. Our biggest focus is with youth and make sure that the youth are empowered with knowledge and information so they make uh, better informed choices down their journey in life. Uh, part of our campaigning is that we do a lot of school engagement, so we go into the schools and we uh, engage with the kids, but also we go to a lot of community events and support the big major events in Melbourne and across Victoria, particularly the statewide sporting carnivals, and we make sure that they're smoke free. My name is Trudy Unumura, and I'm come from Gapoya community. Hi, my name is Thomas Gurley, and I'm from Gapoya community. Hey, my name is Jordan Wainbaranga, and I'm from Ramgining community. Hi, my name is Daniel Bromet, I'm from Gove. We're there for our own community, you know, we work for Miwash House. We are tackling anti-smoking team that we can support our people. So helping people for the future, helping people, the old people, it's good for us to try and, you know, passing the message. We also go to schools, give educations about cigarette. I'm a Wiradjuri woman and I'm a research fellow at the University of Newcastle. I work in partnership with Aboriginal Community Controlled Health Services predominantly and I've been working for about seven years looking at how to empower our mums to be smoke free during pregnancy. While I continue to talk about smoking in pregnancy, I need to change some of that framing because women are going to vaping because they think it's healthier um, and so we've had some really good discussions this morning about how we need to be really clear with our messaging to always include vaping and e-cigs when we're talking about smoking to ensure that we've got some really good health education about the effects of e-cigs as well on, on our mums and our babies. My name's Raglan Maddox, I come from the Bagamani at Modawa Clans in Papua New Guinea. I'm um, the tobacco free lead uh, at the Australian National University uh, and also head up the National Tackling Indigenous Smoking Impact and Outcome Evaluation. We know that, that kids are picking up products young, early, they're sharing things online through media, um, but as a community I think uh, people across Australia have to do better to support uh, a vape free environment, a smoke free environment. 
Uh, we hear from kids and others, parents, teachers, principals, um, that we must do better to support these kids to foster a safe and healthy environment. Uh, how we do that, I think, locally tailored approaches. Uh, one of the beauties of, of this national conference is seeing the diversity across Australia, different languages, different cultures, protocols, elders, champions, um, coming together to celebrate what works for them, uh, meeting them in their terms and uh, really celebrating that success. We have enough other conditions. We don't need, we don't need another one. Um, you know, people who have strokes um, because of smoking, and we know that smoking also, you know, it's more than just affect getting lung cancer. It has an impact on all cancers and can contribute to them. Smoking is the only uh, legal drug that's out there that that um, people are allowed to use, and and um, because they sell them, and and they have such a detrimental impact on both the individual's health, the health of their family, the, the, the economic health of their family. So we've got to look at all these things and that's what our teams are about. They're about working with our mob in, to talk in a way that, that they can understand uh, about how to, uh, you know, the impacts of smoking and how to, how to go and seek help uh, to, to give up smoking. But you know, the best way to, to really address smoking is not to take it up in the first place. And that's why we work a lot with kids and people who don't smoke to make sure that they don't smoke. Um, and, and the same goes for vaping. And so, but we do it in a, a really culturally sound way, a way that, that um, people can relate to in, within their own cultural context. Uh, it may be uh, talking in language, it could be in, in talking about concepts uh, around health uh, that, that people can better understand. teams from across the nation uh, celebrating the success of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities in promoting and fostering smoke-free norms. Uh, we've seen tremendous success in the reduction of tobacco use and prevalence across the country, uh, particularly among youth and young people, with uh, young people not taking up smoking at the same rates they have previously. So tremendous success, especially for such a young population, uh, and really to see the growth of uh, such a workforce is, is a, an honour and a privilege to witness. Across tobacco control, I think there's there's potential growth across the field. We've we've seen over the last 10 or 15 years, uh, discussions change and evolve. Uh, the tobacco industry continues to promote a product that when used as directed kills. Uh, but in spite of this, communities continue to foster smoke-free norms. Uh, one area of concern and something we hear again and again from communities is uh, the increasing of vaping, particularly among youth and young people uh, from primary schools, high schools and, and non-smokers as well. So uh, if there's one thing that we've, we've learnt and we keep hearing from communities is uh, that we must do better to support our kids uh, to be nicotine free, vape free and smoke free. There, there's always pressures, if it's not uh, peer group pressure from um, from friends, family, community, from seeing the role modelling of behaviour in, in the streets and in everyday behaviours, um, there is an industry that profits uh, at the expense of that. So not only their peers and social media and uh, the inability to escape from social media on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we, you know, when I was a kid, I was coming home from school and, and school was over. These days, kids are coming home from school and there's Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and Snapchat. Uh, if you want an e-cigarette, you just jump on Gumtree, you'll have an e-cigarette in, in, you know, in a matter of minutes, not, not days and weeks uh, like when I was a kid. Um, we know that, that these guys are entrepreneurial, um, so the pressure is immense. Um, but we know that resilience, we see this every day, we've got 200 odd staff members downstairs, we've got 200 ab odd Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people uh, every day stepping up for their communities, listening to communities, representing communities uh, and supporting them, fostering a safer space uh, to support those people to be smoke free, to be nicotine free. It's about how we get around families, how we get around them with love to protect them from a, a predatory environment uh, where people are, are, are winning and, and making money at the expense of those lives. Uh, vaping in Nolanbo is getting into it. I think it's probably bringing vaping to go from out of states. So that's why it's making more issues, kids just Taste, taste the vape flavours and more into getting into it? I think that is to try and talk to the community and 
spread the message to the Yolngu people because uh, Aboriginal people is getting more having a habit about the cigarette and I think the kids it's more important for the community because are they the one the future so that that the community can be strong and healthy and that's a helpful message for the community. What's on the increase as well is vaping um, in our communities so we want to really make sure that our youth are a better understanding about the dangers of vaping and understanding what, what, um, why people vape continuously which is because of nicotine addiction. So for us it's just our main goal and objective is just being always front and centre with our community and just pretty much campaigning to just bring down the smoking rates. We've seen same, uh, great success already in the last, you know, over 10 years since TIS has commenced in 2010. I've been there since from day one and I've already seen the, the impacts of what TIS have been doing, not just within in my area in Melbourne, but all across Australia with all the other TIS teams on their activities and their campaigning as well. There's several factors why young people might take up vaping. One is probably because their peers are doing it. It's still legal to buy vapes, but obviously it's illegal to have nicotine in, in them. It's undetectable as, as what, like an what a conventional cigarette is. So, in social media with the, the rise of vaping um, content, um, that can play an influence, but there's many factors of why young people are, are vaping. Our job as TIS workers and TIS teams is just give the information to our young people so they make better informed decisions down there in, in their lives. We're not expecting overnight successes, but our main objective is to educate and inform our mob more about the information that will be worthy to them later in life to make better decisions. When we're talking about working with youth, we do a number of a number of things. One is, and and the, probably the more the most important, is we go into the school system and we talk to our kids um, across the nation to make sure that they understand about the benefits of not smoking and the detriments of smoking. And that includes vaping, uh, because our youth are are really being impacted by by e-cigarettes and vaping, uh, mainly because you know it's been addressed and promoted as something that they can all get involved with, a recreation activity, you know, blow big smoke rings and all that sort of stuff. But what it doesn't address is that every time somebody takes in uh, a breath from that vaping device, it's a foreign particle that's going into your lungs. And that can have a really uh, bad impact on, on, particularly on asthmas and any lung conditions. There's a lot of impacts to our mums and bubs when they smoke during pregnancy. We have a lot of health outcomes that some of our mums aren't quite sure what that means. So things like messages of, you know, if you smoke your baby, you'll have a small baby. Uh, some of our mums don't realise what those health outcomes can be long term for the bubs if they're born small. But Predominantly the work that I've done has shown that our mums really care about their babies and more often than not they're not given the right health information to be able to be smoke free during pregnancy. Uh, women have been told to cut down and that was okay. They've been told um, just to you know, do the best they can. They're not getting clear messages that the best thing for you and bub is to be smoke free during pregnancy. So a lot of the work we do is really about making sure that message is clear and consistent, but then also exploring what our women want to support them to be smoke free, because they need support when they're making a quit attempt, particularly during pregnancy. We just got asked how we can really start to target some of our attention into our young women in schools and, and look at the preventative. Up until now, we've really been trying to address it in almost crisis mode, looking at smoking in pregnancy. Uh, and so now we're gonna start partnering with some of the TIS sites and look at how we can enhance what we're delivering to our young girls so that they know uh, the effects of smoking during pregnancy before they're um, pregnant and um, develop some really strong health messaging and education for our young women. The other big objective for us is to engage with our pregnant women as well and making sure that our um, new mums uh, are making 
uh, better decisions around their pregnancy, particularly around smoking. Because of the high prevalence of smoking in our communities, our objective is to, to, to pretty much bring down the rates of smoking in our community. It ain't going to happen overnight, but it's just about uh, being consistently um, campaigning, being on the ground, front and centre with our communities, given you know, the messaging and the education with our mob. So where I'm from, I just see when I take my kids to school <clears throat> during the break time, I see many like young mothers during the break time, they go every, like during the break time, they go out, have a ciggy for like one minute, two minutes and come back, which is no good. You'll know that many of our teams, and I, I look at the, our Miwatch team out in eastern Arnhem Land, have done a lot of work about smoke-free homes and smoke-free workplaces, where they work with, with households to say, look, it's no good to smoke inside the house. If anybody wants to smoke, they go outside and, and, and talk about that as an issue because, you know, we, that, that is a really big impactor, secondhand smoke and thirdhand smoke, but also uh, from vaping because if you watch somebody who vapes, they breathe out a lot of vapour. And, and so, but we don't know the full impact on the health of, of those vapes. So, you know, it's important that we address those issues and, and address them well. So we're, we're about helping people to understand uh, about the negative and positive impacts of smoking. And the positive impact is really about not smoking. And, um, and if you don't smoke and you don't waste money on, on buying cigarettes or vaping, that's money that the household can use. And, you know, we see and we hear stories all the time from people around the nation. Once they give up smoking, suddenly they've got more money uh, to, to buy food, uh, to, to be able to get clothing, uh, to be able to participate in, in, in sports for their kids. Our kids who aren't able to afford to play sport because it costs too much money, when people, families give up smoking, they've suddenly got the money that they can do it. Somebody who, who, who smokes a packet a day over a year will spend close to $20,000 on cigarettes. You know, cigarettes now are costing $2, $2.50 each. And so, you know, that's three minutes of fun that they might have and then they throw it away. And that's the other important thing to remember is that the environmental impacts of smoking, particularly for our mob now, because we're of the country and for the country, but smokers don't even think about it. They just flick their cigarette buddy out there. You know, their vaping devices get dropped they don't biodegrade, they don't, they don't come back in. They could last for 30, 50 years. And, and the pollution that they cause, even from cigarette butts, used cigarette butts in the water systems, kill our plants, kill our, our fish and, and other water life. So we've got to really think about it. And particularly for us as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, that, that environmental impacts are so important. Yeah, I think the problem with the yeah, family, you know, the number more people smoking in one house, so, and that's a problem for us like, in the community and also, people, you know, for the people. We always find um, butts around in the community, but we'll try and educate them to put in the, like, in a small tin or something. For the team, it's, it's really sad for that people, you know, smoke and then throw the butts because kids might grab or picking up quickly. The best thing about coming to a TIS conference is that as a researcher we can bring some of our knowledge to the table but we sit with experts with all of the community knowledge to be able to translate what we know in research or evidence to their communities in the right way for their communities. We know Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities, we're so diverse. So making sure that all the approaches that we have are community driven and the messages are really clear and relevant to those people. So we just had a hour long instead of half hour yarning session just about this because the communities were just so excited to talk about the ways in which they can embed better health messaging and population health approaches to support our mums. I like about this workshop because I get a lot of information and learning about the different um, 
the smoking issues. Yeah, it is working because we get a lot of um, um, learning and education from the um, trackling indigenous um, workshops. And yeah, it's give us more um, um, confidence. It will get help the uh, community because if we need more information that they can get from this workshop, we can bring to our community. It's good that we can pass a message so that everybody can see it. And it's sharing the message of, um, about the information and also helping the people that they can learn more and you know so they can keep their strong healthy and you know life. These workshops are really good to hear other share successes and experience because sometimes we can be stuck in our own cocoon and doing stuff on our own but hearing other mob around Australia doing what they're doing and it, it, the beauty about this is sparks new ideas for us to go back to our own communities and, and just pretty much be um, innovative and creative and that's the beauty about this. We can be as creative and innovative as much as we want but you know all we want to do is just make sure our mob are more engaged, informed and make better decisions around smoking and vaping. So people need to start stop on you know, smoking because it's bad for us for health. Ka <laughs> Keep up smoking, we can to smoke in our lit. Billy no one ako, no one health go. Yalani to read it to do to drinking, exercise, a lot of exercise, uh, drinking a lot of water. That's keep you healthy. Nearly do the yaka main mak, no more gangarako, limrong book mako, dingy limtuyaka win marchi. Yaka up through Ali, doing Ali, no to Yaka we in Gamma. Tabai Rogana, no Yamarculin, Nini Gamarichual and Walanga we in Nalin Dully, Bumang Ali Kalinga. Lia brain bumbrung bumbrung, down the inside lungs mala. Dinging Alica, Dingaman, a redic tuna. key thing for all of our mob to think about, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people across the nation, is the best remedy to address smoking is not take it up. The best way is to talk about it within the family unit about why you shouldn't smoke and the impact uh, on, on smoking and vaping, particularly at an early age, that that will be contributing to very poor health, but also contributing to, to the lack of income within the family unit. None of us want to want to be uh, having a chronic disease, be it a heart disease, uh, be it a cancer, and there's plenty of them around. We don't need them, we, we get them anyhow, but um, they're always a bigger chance that you'll get those cancers and chronic disease if you are a smoker or you hang around with people who smoke. And that's why we say, make your home smoke-free home. Make your car a smoke-free car and, and a vape-free car. And so a lot of our advertising is about uh, tackling smoking and tackling vaping. And then remember that there's a lot of support out there. One of the best ways um, is to ring the quick line and, and get information off them. And they'll, they'll talk to you in a culturally um, uh, sound way 
because we've got Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander quickline workers around the nation. We've trained all quickline workers to be culturally able to work with our mob. So, you know, that's a really important one. Or if you're in a, in a bigger township, go to your chemist. Ask them how to, you know, what you need to get in the way of nicotine replacement therapies uh, to address your smoking. Or, more importantly, talk to your doctor, talk to your health worker, and they'll be able to give you good guidance. They'll give you what we call a brief intervention. I'll talk about giving up smoking. So there's plenty of support out there um, to, to be able to do it. Our workers are there, the Tackling Indigenous Smoking Workers, is to provide you information, provide you with, with referral pathways. And what we say we have to do with smoking, we also have to do with vaping. And don't be sucked in by all the advertising that vaping is, is good for you. Uh, that vaping is better than smoking. All of them have a bad impact. Anybody who takes anything foreign into your lungs will have a bad impact. So, so let's look at both smoking and vaping and make sure we don't do it. If you don't smoke, don't smoke. If you don't vape, don't vape. And best of all, if you want to give up, go and talk to a, uh, a health worker or a health professional and they'll help you do it. Presence, 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 that's our main um, goal. So we do um, multiple campaigning, either it's through merchandise, advertising and presence at community events. So for us is that we're able to create um, marketing um, content such as for TV, radio, having street posters across Melbourne and we know where all the mob live in Melbourne so we make sure that specifically um, these post street um, billboards are in those locations and for us to be at community events at all times, at, at most events, but to create the attraction for mob to engage with the campaign, merchandising plays a big role and for mob to access our merchandise, we get them to engage with a TIS activity and part of that TIS activity is to, to participate in our video tutorials, which goes for about five minutes. But in those five minutes, it's given them brief education about smoking and vaping and they respond to the questions while they're engaging on the video tutorials. And for, for us, that's a better way to engage with our mob from, a visual, from an audio visual point of view. And then once they've done that, they get access to the merchandise. But the merchandise also is a walking billboard for us within the community as well. So that's a, the part of our campaign strategy. I think the people need to go start to the clinic if they get sick. So for own people and own young or, you know, people that we're here to try and help our own community. If they're sick, they can go to clinic. If, if they need, feel comfortable or, you know, want to give up, they can try and go to clinic. But if they feel sad, if they feel worried, they can, you know, talk to us. We, we're there for them, we can help them. All the work that I do is all about self-determination and empowerment. I don't want to come and hound Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people telling them how bad they are for smoking. I smoked before I had kids, so I know exactly what that's like. I have four children of my own, so I'm here to make sure that Aboriginal people are informed, educated, empowered, but then once they want to make a quit attempt, they know where to go to and the supports that they're able to access are appropriate and meaningful to them because I believe that's what's going to help our future generations be completely smoke free. Smoking and vaping secondhand, it doesn't even just have to be you smoking or vaping, does get to your baby and does harm your baby, both when you're pregnant but also when your baby's born. So the best thing for you to do is just to remove yourself from those situations. It's always a bit hard to tell mob to stop doing something. Uh, so even when I was pregnant, I just removed myself from those situations to, you know, protect my babies. Our babies are our future and we need them to have the best start in life and the best start in life is for you to be smoke free. Be the change that you want to see. Uh, be the, the change for the generations to come. Uh, be the change, uh, break that chain in, in smoking prevalence uh, so that we can see longer living, healthy, happy, uh, thriving communities uh, that we'll see for many, many, many years to come.
Yeah, Kareli.